But he's like, have you ever thought about killing yourself? And she's like, well, I've thought about it. And he's like, give me the goddamn details, lady. <laughs> Tell me all about it. And you, it's, like, it's so clear that, like, she's just in that position where, like, she's like, well, I thought about it as in, like, I was like, boy, I bet you couldn't probably kill yourself with that razor. It's a safety razor. Yeah, he starts working out logistics with her. Like, yeah. what, what way has he been thinking about? Let's workshop some ideas. <laughs> what have you been doing? You're a big girl, so pills probably aren't going to be a path. I'm just being honest here. <laughs> can I give you that feedback? There's uh, not enough you can take, all right? God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because sometimes I say yes, even when I'm high. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know who's a good actor? Who's that? Everyone willing to talk with a random stranger on the street. <laughs> the people who are eager to do that, they're the best actors. Yeah, no, as it turns out. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic. I uh, thought about it, and I threw all my medication <laughs> in the garbage. Okay. And it's been 30 minutes now, so... <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. It's going to be fine. Did you, did you turn your life over to Jesus? No. No, no, no. Oh. No, not yet. Oh. I, I wanted to get rid of the meds okay. first. That's like the a, first step. Like, Bunch of organic like bullshit. Parachute. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, exactly. All right, so before we get deeper into it with these so far kind of inside jokes, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Exit the Appeal of Suicide by Ray Comfort, which is a movie that answers an important question that we often deal with. So you know how people defend religion and they're like, you know, don't be a dick. Let people have their beliefs. What's the worst that could happen? Uh-huh. Well... They could kill themselves instead of seeing a real doctor because they think faith equals therapy and medicine. That's pretty much the worst yeah. that could happen. What the, the this, fuck is wrong with this guy? This movie is the worst that could happen. That could yeah. be yep. the title of this film. There you go. Yeah. We found it. We found it. Worst <laughs> case scenario by Ray Comfort. Yeah. And Eli, I've already spilled the beans a bit and so has Heath. But tell us, how bad was this movie? Well... If you loved Jonestown, but you thought there was way too much fucking around with flavored beverages, <laughs> you will love this movie. Ah, uh, god damn it! This movie is going to compete with Vax for the like the movie we watched with the highest body count. Revolting. Yeah. Mm. So this is a this is a this is Ray Comfort's take on suicide and how you know your best bet if you're feeling suicidal is not really to listen to them doctors so much but probably your pastor instead <laughs> that's the message of this film mm. oh. and to give you an idea how dumb the audience he has is by the way they sell dvds of this free movie on youtube <laughs> on the website laser discs yeah. and beta <laughs> right. maxes what the fuck I for a dollar some, <laughs> yeah i just imagine some grandma walking into a hollowed out blockbuster do y'all have charlie bit my finger <laughs> i done heard so much about it but but anyway it says they offer these dvds so that you can hand them wow you can give them away quote to your friends family neighborhood outside your local high school or at your university damn it <laughs> Uh, professor, I hate to interrupt your lecture, but I have a gift for you. It's a 40 minute movie about how to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then as if this website hadn't already reached peak assholery, they add that you can even leave this as a tip. At a Are you, restaurant. I will <laughs> fork stab you in the eye. Are you fucking... I, I'll I pull it out. I will slowly eat your eyeball while I'm <laughs> making intense eye contact with your remaining eyeball. <laughs> Fuck you. I will go back in time and spit in all the food you ever eat. <laughs> ever. Like, I will find a way to crawl inside your mom's tit and spit into your mom's <laughs> tit. Jesus. If you tipped me, I would just, like, everything throughout your life, you'd be, like, hiding in a cave with a cookie, and just as your mouth closed, I'd pop out with my shrink ray from inside your mouth and spit on that cookie. That is what I would do if you tipped me with this movie. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, so not only is it, it's, like, all the fun of getting tipped with a religious track with the added emphasis of, I'd want to kill myself if I had your job. <laughs> right? Ugh. 
Uh, well, so of course I ordered a couple hundred copies. Um, how do you guys want to give away your share? It was on the company card. Oh, good. I'm going to use it to make it rain on strippers. Um, <laughs> it's a lot more painful than you'd think. So they do not like it. They do not like it. But if you get a good wrist action going, you can, you can draw blood. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say t-shirt gun. So basically the same <laughs> as Eli's. Basically the same. I usually bring a t-shirt gun to strip clubs. <laughs> well, wait, why would you not? Um, now, I, I should warn everybody that this is probably going to be a bit of a shorter episode than usual because one of us is bound to kill ourselves before it's over. What with all oh. this godlessness? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hands down, hands down. Where was I was not looking for volunteers, Eli. Thumbs and also, up. of course, <laughs> this is, of course, this is also a it's this is Ray Comfort. So this is a thirty nine minute movie. Because even that is asking a ton from his attention span, apparently. Um, now, is there is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I, I'm going to go with best worst atheist person on the street. I bet I can guess. So, so Ray Comfort, <laughs> like that's his thing. He right. just harasses random people until he finds the ones that make his point. So, lots of this movie is him talking to depressed people who think more Jesus might help him. But this one atheist lady is fucking nuts. I feel like Ray was bothering some guy on a bench like he does. And this lady just came over to him and was like, sir, <laughs> sir, you with the microphone? Uh, I'd like to bother you with my invisible microphone. Yeah, she's insane. Like, she always seemed like she was already in the middle of a rant when he started filming her. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. And they had to keep cutting away before she's like, and the pigeons are watching you. They're reporting. <laughs> Yeah. They know the Chinese, they train them. I tried, but I kept eating them. My hair, I got this diet hot topic. They said I stole it, but I, my cousin mm, gave me a gift card. The Gap owns the same company. It's all Creed of Gold. Have you seen Creed of Gold? <laughs> Can I go with best way to kill people? <laughs> like, if there was a DVD case that had a little gun with a single bullet in it, <laughs> and when you opened it, it shot you in the face, it would probably <laughs> kill less people than if you followed the instructions of this movie. <laughs> no, I think you might be right. Yeah, because that that movie would get terrible reviews. But um, I, I also I, I had a best worst for this one, which is best worst marketing campaign. And his marketing campaign on this was to seize on every celebrity suicide in the last like four or five months and say, oh, if only they'd watched my movie. And during the movie, uh, spoilers, he's going to talk about a bunch of not suicides. Yes. It's like exactly. dying of old age and dying of cancer. <laughs> it's just like, ah, if only it's all the same. If only George Michael had had Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Well, as hesitant as I am to relive watching a Ray Comfort movie, I also feel like counteracting this flick might save a life or two. So we're going to keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the negligent homicide that is Exit, the appeal of suicide. From the makers of Exit. And what have you got there? It's, um, it's a cast. Comes a movie about an epidemic sweeping the nation. And tell me, why have you why have you got a case? Oh, I broke my leg playing soccer. And how you can stop it. Now tell me, do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, yeah, totally believe in Jesus. My Uber's here, though, so I'm just going to take off. A then... journey of healing. And yet Matthew says that those with faith in Christ will be healed. Oh, um, well, I think he probably meant it like, you know, metaphorically. No, he did not. So he did not. You no. Okay. Of what was never broken. So let's sum up. Let's just sum up here. Matthew says, if you believe in Jesus, you're healed. You think you've got a broken leg, but you believe in Jesus, so you can't have a broken leg, can you? Um, I, I do, though. My, my leg is definitely broken. Look. Coming next summer. Legs it. Please move. Your leg is fine. Nope. Broken. But go away, seriously. You I'm you go away. Leaving. Go away on your normal I'm, leg. That doesn't make sense. It's fine. Healed. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Carl the Pug of Pegacon. And welcome to my new show, Chatting with Carl. My guest today is Christian evangelist Ray Comfort. Ray, thanks for joining me. Glad to be here, Carl. 
have some garlic bread. I just made it. Thank you. So, Ray, today the gang are reviewing your new movie, Exit, which marginally ties the normal amount of celebrity deaths that happened in 2016 to your belief that one can cure their depression by believing in Jesus. Is that correct? It is. Dangerous, harmful advice, Carl. I will get someone killed. You sure will, Ray. You sure will. Now, Ray, we've watched a few of your movies now, and I gotta admit, it seems like death and how often people die is the running theme of a lot of your movies. I'm a dog, unicorn, pug, pegasus. Oh, it is, Carl, and you are. If one bothers to scratch the surface of literally anything I say, underneath is the screaming, pulsing terror of the unknown. You know, Freud and Jung have talked quite a bit about that. If I read anything but the Bible, I start screaming. Sure, sure. So basically... Uh, basically, it's this. I have a pathological fear of death. I've centered my entire life around it, and the only way I've been able to cope is to center my existence around pretending that I won't die and that I can stop others around me from dying through literal magic, you see. Wow, that is... That is textbook Jungian, Ray. I gotta admit, I'm a little impressed someone can think that in the 21st century. Yep. Most people have, like, friends, a family, of fucking hobbies, and I have just a cloying need to believe that I will single-handedly destroy death through the belief in magic. Well, I gotta say, Ray, that doesn't sound super healthy, and I eat way too much kibble. It's not. Okay, Ray, thanks for coming. Everyone, make sure you check out Ray's new movie, Exit. It's medically negligent. Any sane set of laws would have prevented me from making it, Carl. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, Ray. Dummy rubs? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Get in there. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with Ray killing it in front of an audience that we never see. <laughs> so, <laughs> talking in front of a laugh machine, let's say. <laughs> it's prosperity gospel jokes, because... Can you imagine demanding money at the end of your church service? <laughs> Good. Ray would never do that. Yeah, the crowd's going wild for his. I feel like Ray did all the laughs in ADR himself. <laughs> Just moved around the theater a little bit. Out of control. It's the church audience. People are like, stop. I am shitting myself right now. I'm shitting. I'm shitting. And this is that, by the way, he's got this giant, this ring with this giant fake rock on it or whatever and he's like a lot of people have been saying oh, i've been preaching the prosperity gospel that's got to stop and i thought you know hey like open on a joke we can all get behind whatever but this becomes far less appropriate when it cuts like straight from ray comfort live at the improv to like suicide logo and music oh yeah and then the uh the girl the first girl we speak to and why she's depressed the transition is uh and i said to him I don't know if this is a canoe, but either way, we better start paddling. So I was raped as a child, and that's always been really hard for <laughs> me. Yes. Like, she's are, reacting to his joke. That's we how are, quick the cut is. <laughs> <laughs> we are 45 seconds into the movie, and it's like, when I was 10 to 12 years old, I was gang raped by three men from my church. That's a weird hole to dig for yourself <laughs> yeah, right? in minute one of your movie. Also, uh, I'm confused by the phrasing. Was she getting gang raped for three years <laughs> or she can't recall the exact year I, this story she was gang raped? Very confusing because he asks if they were a member of her church and she was like, they snuck in and then they were left. So they just were they waiting every day? I've stopped going to that church every day. Yeah, for that's, 10 to 12. At yeah. a certain point, you're not here for the hunting. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Also, dude. remember the date. I feel like that would be an easy one. Like, it, I feel like it would say it on your Hanzo sword and you'd be like, ready to go. <laughs> there you go. But it's a weird transition. And also, like, this is going to come up throughout the movie. So I want to talk about this. Everyone's sort of like half smiling the way teenagers do when they're fucking with you. So I don't know who's talking in these. There's one person who's being honest. There's one person who's crazy. There's one person who is desperate to leave. There's one person who is very clearly fucking with Ray. But this girl, I'm never sure. Because she'll be like, oh, yeah, no, I was gang raped every day for two years. Yeah, totally, 100%. You know what else? I'm a unicorn. And it's like, I, mm, I feel like you're making... Well, and wouldn't it be nice if he was like required to show us how many interviews it took to get these ones? Because like the, of the first five people we see, four of them have like unnaturally weird 
hair colors, you know, pop purple and orange hair. And I guess that's probably a, a pretty high marker for I get depressed, but, but so is I'll spend the next 15 minutes voluntarily talking to Ray comfort. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, um, but yeah, so we're man on the streeting because that's what Ray comfort thinks a movie is. And we learn, we introduce like basically the five people we will spend the rest of this movie bothering. Yeah. Mm. And, and again, that the girl who got gang raped, He's cutting away and cutting back. She like like Eli said, she was clearly laughing in between. Like, what the fuck was the hilarious rape joke from Ray Comfort there <laughs> off camera? What was that? Like, pan over and Daniel Tosh is walking away. All right, that's it for me. Like, <laughs> what? Jesus Christ. Fucking weird. Yeah, so we we introduce all our men on the street, which which again, they're all like, you know, I, I think the oldest one, well, other than the weird crazy lady that um, Heath mentioned at the beginning there, they, I think the oldest one is probably 19, maybe 20. Uh, but before we can get back to them, we have to cut to a few of his big celebrity guests. Mm. Dead ones. Yep. On, on B roll. Yeah, it was public got, uh, domain. Patrick Swayze, who didn't mm -hmm. kill himself. Michael nope. Jackson, who didn't kill himself. No, nope, no. Nope. George uh -huh. Michael, who didn't kill himself. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Exit, but he's not the dangers of dying uh, of being dead. <laughs> of various ailments. Well, but see, at this point, he's not making the suicide point. He's he's making a even more bizarre one. He says people are only aware of mortality when celebrities die. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like, so if you don't follow celebrity news, your grandma dies, and you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> are people dying? <laughs> what? <laughs> He even says dying is way more common than people think. I don't uh, see how this could be true. <laughs> how? Well, that's that's a solid question. How common do people think dying is? I <laughs> like, more was than under the impression it was 100% of the population. Exactly. More than 100 is too many. Less than 100 is too few. I, I think it's a really small it goldie yeah, right. zone. It's it's a hundred. <laughs> That's it. But <laughs> as if he needs to back up because he starts going off on like, you know, here's how many people die a minute, and that's this many an hour, and that's this many a day. And we're like, yeah, no, we know how numbers work. You you're just multiplying now, Ray. Yeah, like he didn't think we'd get what he meant by dying. So he <laughs> chose us a graphic of vital signs yes. flatlining. Like, <laughs> yes. Oh, death. Well, well, right. dying. End of life. End and of in life. case that wasn't enough, he also showed there's a long list of additional dead people to back up his <laughs> right. numbers. Yeah. And then he names large numbers and he's like, they're not going to get, I'll show him the national debt clock. <laughs> they're not going to understand large numbers either. So we <laughs> see that. So oh. fucking stupid. Let's point out, this is the second movie in a fucking row that Ray has done this in. They're like, eh, three people a second times 12 seconds equals 80 million people. <laughs> Is there anything more obvious about Ray's movies than they are a thin, thin, fucking condom thin veneer over his clawing terror of death? Oh, like, my God. <laughs> we're going to get into the dangerous advice he gives, but like he is just so sure he's figured out how not to die, isn't he? Like, I feel like Carl Jung would have been like, well, that is an exaggerated version of what I meant. That's not <laughs> who, who arranged for this actor. That's not funny, guys. I meant it as a metaphor. Obviously, no one would do that. It's not here all a thousand faces. I'm going to call Joe Campbell and tell him this is very silly. You're all being very silly. <laughs> yeah, well, and and he constantly and he's and he's trying to instill it in the people that he's talking to, right? Because you can see the people, the the man on the street, and he'd be going like, "Are you afraid of death?" And they'd be going like, "No, that seems like a useless thing." To, Are you afraid of death? And then you'd cut away from him after a while, and they would they'd come back and they go like, "Yeah, okay, I guess I'm." A I guess when you put it that way, sure. Now I'm scared. Will you leave? <laughs> Will if you, I say yes? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. If if someone asks you more than once if you're afraid of death, there's a chance they're about to kill you. So I would get more scared <laughs> on repeated inquiries. <laughs> right. And this is where we also get the uh, Robin Williams suicide. Uh, fun fact, which the movie will not acknowledge, Robin Williams committed suicide because he had a terrible, rare form of MS and didn't want to die in horrible pain and dementia. Is that confirmed? Yes. In oh, right the coroner's up. report, he had body something something, 
And he took his own life, not because he was sad, but because he wanted to die with dignity and he couldn't do it because he was Robin fucking Williams. Yeah. I, well, and then like he brings up Robin Williams, like, cause you know, he's like, ah, they're not going to sue me for using his picture. And then he says, the tragedy is that Robin didn't even know why he was depressed. Now we're going to get to the is veracity it? of that state. Well, right. If a plane crashes into my house and kills me, the tragedy isn't that I don't know what caused the engine <laughs> malfunction. The tragedy <laughs> is that I'm fucking dead. <laughs> Well, he doubles down on this because he then says, nobody knows why depression yeah. happens. <laughs> right. Does, like, how does, does bees fly the fucking uh, right. depression version? <laughs> does nobody know at all? No. Well, it, 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 what what's really going on here is like, you know, careful, rational thinking people aren't willing to ascribe a single cause to such a complex problem. So Ray's going to have to step in and do it for him, He's right? He's like, nuance, I'm going to stop you right there. Nope, <laughs> nope, nope. Go fuck yourself. So, yeah, so now that we've got some Robin Williams, we go back to man on the streeting, uh, where mm -hmm. the opening question this time is, so is suicide big in colleges like it was a band? <laughs> and the answer's like, number two killer after accidents. What, what? Like, so weird. <laughs> Knew right away. <laughs> suicide? <laughs> He's also got this amazing moment where he goes, why do so many celebrities kill themselves? And I wrote, because you won't stop tweeting at them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but the, but the chick he's asking at this point makes this great point about, well, you know, there's a huge social stigma about seeking mental help. I think a lot of religious. OK, I've got that. I got that. And when she starts to make a solid point, he snatches away the microphone, <laughs> makes cuts her off and makes that point as though he was explaining it to and her. Steals it. Exactly. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, no, that's what I was saying into your microphone when you jerked it away like an asshole. Yeah. And like these are these are all good points. But like, I know he's about to start yelling yes. Jesus, like mid sentence. Right. He's right. just going to like any minute that's going to happen. Yeah, right. Because up to this point, this could just be like a good video to have out on YouTube about suicide. Up, up until this point, he hasn't tipped his hand at all. Yeah, it's so he will. It, Don't worry. The dread that you have watching these this good advice is yeah. like the breakup talk. Someone's like, I just want you to know I've really Oh my God, get to it. Yeah, right, right. They're like, hey, you're smart and you're witty. Normally I like hearing this stuff, but let's kind of fast forward, huh? I have enough friends. Tell me my dick doesn't work and it's a problem. Oh. Yeah. Well, he, he does take a little left turn right here. This is where, if I remember correctly, we cut to Prince William mm -hmm. Skyping with Lady Gaga. Is that is Prince that, William? I'm pretty sure that was Prince William. I am and also Lady Gaga. pretty sure that's Prince William. I, have, that I seems... wouldn't know him if he bit me on the ass. But yeah, why wouldn't they have like, why? because he came up and said, this is Lady Gaga. P Prince William, Lady Gaga, and Ray Comfort. Circle the one that doesn't belong. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? How does he why? get these people? Why was Prince William Skyping with Lady Gaga? And why is that footage available? He's the father <laughs> of the Sun King. Like, he doesn't belong. <laughs> what, how did that? I, uh, okay. Also, because he keeps listing dead people. And I think at a certain point, he ran out. Or either that or I'm the only one who has no idea who Mindy McCready is. Is that just me? I uh, believe she was Dean Kane's wife at one point. Well, there, there you Kane. go. That's how far down into the bucket he's got. He was of dead celebrities. Dean Kane was Superman. Yeah, no, he was. He was. An awful lot of this movie, though, is just a, like an automated slideshow of his Google results, isn't it? Like if you just wait, celebrity deaths 2017 or whatever, and that's what we're getting. And then we get this weird like hop from like Lady Gaga has depression. Here's a video of a guy shooting himself in the fucking head. Whoa. What the fuck was that? What? Right? Which is so. Remember that so weird. tape that went around of that mayor shooting himself in the fucking mouth? It was just like, we cut right into that. It was very upsetting. I was not <laughs> ready for some faces of death in the middle of this. Right, yeah. And it was a strange type of suicide. Like, the guy pulls the gun out of his pocket like a cowboy dueling himself. Like, <laughs> Yeah, what? right, like there was a quick draw element to this Here. suicide. And why yeah. would you show us... I, no, yeah, there was, there was, uh, very confusing. Get ready for him because there are several times when he'll just be like, shock value. <laughs> um, and so now we get some, some suicide statistics. And to help drive these home, we're going to get some grossly cartoony graphics. <laughs> was, that a, was that a graphic for like 
suicide guy? Yes. Like the men's rooms guy, but he just shot himself? Yes. That's, what the fuck was happening? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. This whole numbers bit in the middle, it's a, it's a little bit confusing. I was wondering, can we get some fun cartoons to really liven up <laughs> the 40,000 deaths by suicide a year I'm going to be describing? Yeah. Okay. So that is what happened. But then why... I feel like the guy, the suicide guy, icon guy, he shouldn't be laying sideways on a hospital cart. That's just, like, that would just be a weird thing for the doctors to prop him up like that. <laughs> or, I don't know. Or was it like failed suicide attempt guy? I, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And, and, it's just like playing words with a stranger. I don't know. I, I love this brief little moment, too. He's talking about how, like, you know, there was this spike in suicides last year. And Newsweek did a whole article, and they were really absolutely positive that it had nothing to do with guns, y'all. Nothing to do with guns. Not <laughs> moving no, on. We promise. Don't look at that article, by the way, because that <laughs> they might not say that, but I, I said it. Yeah, I said it. And look, rewind back and skip over the gun death I just showed you. Yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. Forget the example we just used. And look, not to deflate suicide statistics, I'm not trying to minimize this problem, but like being the highest total is kind of to be expected with an ever rising population, right? Like if the rate stayed the same, we would always have the highest total of suicides if our population kept growing. So anyway, hard transition, (laughs) damn it. (laughs) No one doesn't care if you kill yourself. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Especially if you're Buddhist. (laughs) (laughs) But then he takes a moment to shit on Denmark. Yes. <laughs> his, his next point is like, oh, you're probably wondering, what if I move to Denmark, the happiest country in the world? But if they're so happy, how come they have cancer? <laughs> yeah, he's like, Ugh. oh, they rate highest on the world happiness index, but we took a look. It turns out they're a bunch of drunks with cancer. So fuck Denmark. Or, I mean, Ray Comfort, please move to Denmark or, <laughs> or back to New Zealand because they were beating the U.S. by like five slots on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> just, just for the record, every country in the top 10, single payer health care. Huh. All the happy. Like, I the wonder, GOP is literally just, trying to dismantle happiness <laughs> or at least a big step toward it that we took. Yeah, right. And also, is it just me or did it occasionally feel like Ray was like when he was man on the street and like he was trying to talk these people into killing themselves on camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking out. puts on a hockey mask. Just walk away. <laughs> we will spare your lives. Just walk away. <laughs> and this kid. So let's talk about little baby Kim Jong-un kid. So okay, <laughs> the baby Kim Jong-un kid is either in desperate need of help, in which case I hope he gets it, or fucking with Ray. Because Ray's like, do you ever try to kill yourself? And he's like, oh, yeah, I tried to shoot myself. Missed. Tried to hang myself. Gravity didn't work that day. I tried six different times to kill myself. He missed. Just, like, <laughs> just jumping off a stool. Fuck, my neck is greasy. <laughs> I'm a to sweaty person. Stool. I missed again. Also, He's just and trying I, to hang himself in a pier one in points, keeps jumping onto other stools. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Who's that? A tree stump? Fuck. 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 I'm going to get in between them. Fuck. That's a smaller stump. Fuck. 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 Sir, get down. I'm trying. I am trying. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What is this called? That's the Wunderschmerder Duke. Okay, well, it's terrible for killing yourself, which is weird because this place is Swedish. Can I give you that feedback? <laughs> Yeah, and also, can we talk about the the girl, the, uh, the, 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 the the eyebrow chick? Can we talk about eyebrow chick's distinguishing feature? Yes. Oh, Thank you. Um, can, yeah, so eyebrows and also the food around her mouth. Like she's a five-year-old <laughs> right. who just ate and never wipes it off for the entire movie. She's in a lot of this movie. It's very distracting. I, I understand the food around the mouth thing. Uh, my sister from another <laughs> mister, so I'm totally on board with that. But she is by far the only person in this movie who is, I think, not fucking with Ray. And her eyebrows yeah. are shaved into the shape of sperms. Let's just yep. get it. Let's just talk about it. Her eyebrows are shaved into the shape of sperms. I, she looks like a lovely girl. I hope she gets the care and help she needs. But her eyebrows are shaped like sperms or commas or like apostrophes. But whatever well, it is. Well, she's surprised, but it's usually sperms, you yeah. know? I feel like if you walk into the barber, you say sperm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me the sperm. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
Uh, well, that's what I walk in, say when I walk into the barber. Um, okay, so now it's time to get to some more statistics and shit. For, okay, this is the part of the movie where we have to talk about antidepressants for like 18 seconds. Right? Because mm-hmm. he's like, oh, the epidemic was so bad, they started calling depression a mental disease. That's yep. how he introduces that. That's what happened. It got so bad. They're like, what if we called it a mental disease? <laughs> you know what, guys? This is really getting out of hand. We got to stop calling this the SADS. <laughs> I know you walk into a doctor's office and someone says the saddie times and they just don't take it seriously enough. So what's what, a mental sometime disease? in the mid forties we invent psychotherapy, huh? <laughs> let's, uh, let's get on this, guys. And then we get the amazing clip, which anyone who has been a medicine advocate knows, the Naomi Judd interview. Oh yes. Uh-huh. Oh, does, is she famous or something? This is a famous interview for anyone who's been a medicine ad- advocate or a psychotherapy advocate. Where or Naomi a skeptic. Judd, or yeah. Where Naomi Judd basically went on TV and blamed a bunch of bad surgery on antidepressants. <laughs> oh, <Yep>. Okay. Well, <laughs> my note here is antidepressants cause this fat lady's botched face lift to look bad. <laughs> is what the movie is telling us right now. Like, yep. Did they? Yeah. No. I, I, no, not it no, fucking no. all. That's just what she looked like okay. when they got done. You know what makes faces look even worse? Shooting yourself in them. <laughs> <laughs> if we're comparing side effects, shooting yourself in them is bad. Yep. But this is enough for Ray to just do away with it, right? He, after he shows her and she's like, he's like, oh, look at that. You take that. You take those antidepressants, you'll be all shaky and swell up. And then he says antidepressants remain controversial and we have dealt with that issue. They yep. are off the table now. I mean, they're controversial, so, you know, let's hope there's another solution. Wink, wink. Let's hope there's a better solution (laughs) with none of those terrible side effects. And by the way, there are a ton of blogs and research you can do. Check out that Naomi Judd interview because it's something that still comes up today on, like, the weird Mm wooey pages on Facebook. I'll occasionally still see that. Someone will be like, I was considering antidepressants, and then Naomi Judd looks like a Mylar balloon of herself, so I'm not (laughs) sure. I'm like, no. (laughs) Naomi Judd was like, keep on Botoxing, Jimmy. She just fucking she pushed down the plunger herself. He was like, I'm (laughs) supposed to do that slowly, Naomi. Yeah, and that video, by the way, represents the hard right turn into crazy, destructive, homicidal bullshit that this movie takes. We will never stop turning right. We will just do donuts from this point on. Yeah. So, because this is right, right, because that's where it goes like, well, I guess now it's time to hear what the Bible has to say about it, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. So. And the point he makes is meaningless, right? He's just saying the Bible says we're all terrified of death. Yeah, that's right. like, is there any follow up? No. Well, There's and no look, follow-up. I mean, I don't claim to know the causes of suicide, but I feel like if there's one thing we can rule out, it's fear of death. Fear of death is, <laughs> right? is, is not a cause. I, I, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be brave and say people don't kill themselves because they're afraid of death. That is I, very... I feel like we can go ahead and throw that down in the concrete and just leave it for the future generation. Just like movie trope wrestling in the gun with yourself. If you like, How's that <laughs> Weird. Yeah, I'm oh, afraid way, of mice, so I am a mouse now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, men's room guy is back and he's animating that Bible verse about being afraid of death in case we couldn't get that concept without some kind of visual stimulation to go along with it. And how do all the people in the Bible uh, remember about death without celebrity news? <laughs> oh. how, would the, how would this be even relevant? How would Jesus, they even know? Jesus was the first celebrity oh, death. That's- <laughs> Inconsistent. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> yeah, and okay, from this point on the, in the movie, we're basically going to watch a human being try to convince a clinically depressed person that there's nothing wrong with them, right? This is the, you really don't have diabetes according to the Bible portion of the film, which will encompass the entire (laughs) remainder of the film. Uh Uh-huh. So now we're on the fear of death section, right? Because we're going to learn the fear of death causes you to be sad. Sad causes depression. Depression causes death. Don't think about it too hard. So we get a (laughs) clip of the British view. The Uh British ladies are like, oh, I say I also have a Freudian fear of death. Do you use it to self-destruct? I do, darling. I fucking do. (laughs) 
And then we get Woody Allen. Which okay, you <laughs> how does he get Woody Allen for this? No, he just he just pulled a fucking public domain clip from YouTube <sighs> that he could get away with. So and, and or 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 something that he was sure Woody Allen wasn't going to sue him over or whatever. But the thing about Woody Allen is that Woody Allen talking about depression is so goddamn funny that he literally couldn't put him in there for ninety seconds oh, without this being fucking hilarious. It, it, well, that was hilarious. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I, t- I turned five and I realized that you can die, so I started getting depressed. <laughs> yeah, <it> was- <laughs> because he's an atheist. Yeah, you could use, oh, right. you could yeah, use some religion. <laughs> Do, hold on. Doesn't he have a few other mental disorders, Woody Allen? Is Christianity uh, good for fixing pedophilia? What's their track record? What, what's what's the track record on that? How do they? What about marrying your daughter? Have we talked yeah, about marrying your daughter? How, well, I mean, it, I it, like it does that, help with depression. It does help with depression. If she's so, Asian okay. and a doctor. So, yeah, so we watch a few of the YouTube clips that Ray found while he was searching fear of death. And that's when Neil deGrasse Tyson pops in for a visit. Well, it's not just Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's the montage of can I cut interviews where someone has a good answer about death to make it look like they're afraid. (laughs) Anthony Hopkins gives a brilliant answer. Watch that Larry King interview. He talks about the importance of life and family and shit. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's like, Neil, aren't you afraid of death? And Neil is like, well, end of clip. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's an abrupt cut of Neil deGrasse Tyson in the middle of a great answer, just out of nowhere, like, Due to technical difficulties <laughs> beyond our control, that guy is done talking. Enjoy Whoa. five minutes of elevator music that we <laughs> planned. I mean, but why planned. why use the opening part of the clip, right? I mean, why would you? You don't have to put Neil deGrasse Tyson in there and cut him off mid-word. Ray, Ray, I know, I know you listen to these. I know you pretend <laughs> you don't, and I don't let people tweet at you. So, you know, we're mutually, we're leaving each other alone. But, Ray, you got to stop using us. All right, buds. Keep Larry, <laughs> keep Larry Krause out of things. Keep Neil out of things. Just stick to look. You had a good cut on a hop, yeah. and you got the Robin Williams lie. That was all fine, but just keep <laughs> us out of it. Don't interview me. He did the same thing with Lawrence Krause in that last yeah. one. Exactly. No. Yeah. Exactly. He's like clearly killed him, and then he's like, "Ah, oh, man. All right, we can use like eight seconds of this, but not even. <laughs> just don't use any. What are you doing? Use the frustrated part before he starts talking. Yeah." Um, and then we learned that Bruce Springsteen was also sad once. And at this point, he has gone all the way towards just conflating clinical depression with sad because mom died. Sad because his friend died. Like two of yeah. his band members died in the same year. And he was like, I was sad about that. And it's like, yeah, man. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that we're not talking about the same things here. But again, he's going to conflate those two things because it's going to come in handy for him later. Right. (laughs) Oh, and then we get psychology professor. Oh, my God. Who the where the fuck did he find this guy? Is he the psychology professor of surfing? (laughs) <laughs> his There's, interview is just like listen to me dudes raw depression is gnarly raw there's no way that guy has a phd not even <laughs> words entire segment is just words that rhyme with the surfer dude noise just not bra bra i want to say gra well i don't know. <laughs> oh depression's gnarly bro oh <laughs> that was pretty yeah that's all the brilliant insight we got from that guy and just in case you hadn't really gotten the whole depression isn't fun angle that this movie's going for uh he reinforces it with eyebrow girl giving this long uh like trying to explain how bad depression is moment which is uncomfortable and right. basically he's the whole time saying would you say your life is futile could you say life is futile into the camera or could you at least agree with me when i say it it is very strange, and I should point out that there is actually a dangerous moment here that she engages in, and maybe she said further things, but we should talk about it, where she's like, oh, depression's terrible, and you feel like you'll never feel happy again, but, like, that is part of depression. Part of depression is feeling like it will never get better, but it does, especially with care and treatment, but it just cuts off on her being like, and you feel like you'll never be happy again, and Ray's like, yeah, maybe you won't. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get back yep. to Neil deGrasse Tyson, and yeah. we're back. Yeah, <laughs> and then we get a, a crazy atheist lady who yeah. he crazy does, who he does get to say life is futile. She literally says that, and she talks about her uh, her aunt who 
committed suicide. Mm-hmm. But it's he, he cut it together like one word at a time at at, at points with this. So, so she's like, my aunt killed herself because <laughs> eighth theism couldn't <laughs> make tooth brushing fun. Like what the <laughs> fuck? Well, and then he goes off to they, we get the little bit with orange haired girl who is clearly like not depressed or, you know, she's been depressed here and there because most people have de- dealt with some level of depression. But he's like, have you ever thought about killing yourself? And she's like, well, I've thought about it. And he's like, give me the goddamn details, lady. <laughs> Tell me all about it. And you, it's, like, it's so clear that like she's just in that position where like she's like, well, I thought about it as in like I was like, boy, I bet you couldn't probably kill yourself with that razor. It's a safety razor. Yeah. He starts working out logistics with her. Like, yeah. What, what way has he been thinking about? It? Let's workshop some ideas. <laughs> what have you been doing? You're a big girl. So pills probably aren't going to be a path. I'm just being honest here. <laughs> can I give you that feedback? There's not enough you can take. All right. Also, he goes. Are you being deadly serious? And she just gives him this big fucking smile. And, and seri- like puns with suicide girl, <laughs> right? Really? Like how's it hanging? Any good <laughs> noose? Like really? <laughs> puns? Well, and then we dive into this bizarre dialectic that he has. The would you sell your eye for a million dollars? What the uh, fuck was that? A uh, pause. I would sell my eye for a million dollars. I I think I would really think about yeah. it at least. Buy a fucking full time personal triangulator for every time you go. <laughs> you have plenty of money left over. Yeah. And then okay, so weird question to start with. But then his next question is, what about both eyes for ten million? What? information is gathering here. <laughs> what is he doing? No, is he trying to find the fair market value for this girl's eyes? I, I don't so confusing. I wanted that to keep going. Like, okay, what about a kidney and a finger for <laughs> five million? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. All the weird Noted. businessmen from the beginning of Saw 2 line up and they're like, five million, <laughs> fifteen, <laughs> twenty-two. And you fifty bucks for your hair. What? <laughs> what? He also, he actually, because we go back to baby Kim Jong-un, and he actually says to this guy at one point, he's like, hey, man, come on. If you meant to commit suicide all those times when you hung yourself and missed, you would have just jumped off a cliff, you pussy. (laughs) (laughs) If God wanted you to die, he'd mention that jumping off a cliff is batting like a thousand. But he didn't tell you that. Wait. Wait, <laughs> how does this movie work? Did I just kill? Take, yeah, all right. Good, uh, cut. No, don't keep rolling. No, keep no, rolling. It's keep fine. rolling. It's fine. Uh, we will not cut this in post. No. <laughs> sure And won't. so now we've got to go back to the fear of death thing because he can't not be talking about that for three solid minutes. So now we get a, a series of him cutting to different people, asking them if they're afraid to die. And I want to spend a second on the the, the Asian dude that starts this bit off. Right, because this is the first time we meet him, skateboardy guy. <laughs> He's my favorite. Oh my leader. god, skateboardy guy! He's the best. He really <laughs> in, is. In, in a later scene, if, he's fantastic. If someone could <laughs> juice Heath Enright and then like put it in with some soy sauce and then turn it into a human, okay. that's this oh, character. Wow, it's that's offensive. <laughs> soy right. sauce. We went with soy wow. sauce. He's Asian because uh, he's Asian. Example he's of Asian, Asian. Yeah, culture. No, that's what I, yeah, that's what I figured you were doing there. But yeah, gunpowder. <laughs> But when we the first Asians, meet, it's a compliment. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> they came up with a lot of good stuff. No, they did. Paper, I am out of example. Printing press. Yeah, <laughs> paper. So that so, was yeah. Gutenberg. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it no. actually it was not. He just popularized it in the West. Um, he modified it. He had some important stuff, but no, the Chinese invented the. Printing I was just press. like, I bet if I pretend to correct Noah, he will have to correct me back. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so. This, but but he's asking. He's he's going through, going like, "Are you afraid to die?" And this guy's like, "No, not really." <laughs> and you can see Ray start to panic, and he's like, "But do you believe in God?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Okay, oh, all right, we can still use this stuff, guys." He's religious. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, by the way, we should point out: Asian skateboarder guy just wants to cross the street. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what happens, but his entire thing is just, I, it's green uh, again. It's green again. Dude. I, uh, I, I missed another light. Much. I have to leave. <laughs> and then this is followed by that. We go back to all those various people he's been talking to this whole time. Uh, and we get all of their answers to the, do you believe in God's existence bit? Wait, the, the question is occasionally, do you have any faith? And I'm like, what the fuck kind of question is that? 
Also, there's one girl where he goes, are you a Christian? And she goes, no, I'm a Catholic. Huh? <laughs> Is that well, the, the translation here is I don't know about this Jesus shit. And when I learn, I'll be an atheist. Uh, like good works are bad. Is that the way they're yeah. <laughs> like faith saves a guy from suicide. And then he hands a poor person a dollar and shoots himself in the face. Like what the <laughs> fuck is the message? Catholic, I don't know. And that was that was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was 14 year old Katie Holmes, right? Yes. Oh, I liked her. She had some nice snaggle tea. Like she in did. a good, like she, wild a very trapezoids, good yeah. but they somehow fit. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. She pulled it off. Yeah, and also I love because I, I believe it's baby Kim Jong Un at this point where he's like, you know, well, if you died, would you go to heaven or hell? And he's just like, well, I don't think there is a heaven. And and Ray Comfort's like, are you calling Jesus a liar? Breaks a fucking beer bottle on the bench and shit. What? He's like, no, 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 man. He's like, all right, all right, good. And, this is Back also to where, this weird leading interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. And now keep in mind, this is the same guy who talked about killing himself and missing. He's like, he's at, at one point, this same kid goes like, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've broken all the commandments. Ah, question. <laughs> question. Because <laughs> Ray doesn't ask, but there is a murder commandment. Right? There is. And Ray's like, now you don't hate your dad, do you? And I'm like, hey, Ray, I'm going to want you to jump ahead to, I think it's four or five, not really sure. <laughs> uh, there's a murder one, and I'd like you to take a couple steps back, Ray Bay. Yeah, he's sitting there going, <laughs> like, yeah, well, you know, uh, lied to my mom about fucking my neighbor's stolen mule while engraving a golden calf last Sunday and then I killed her, but I think I think I'm missing one. That's a lot of them <laughs> least, right there. One at least. Um but yeah, I Ray is trying to do his classic because we've seen this a bit a million times. This, this is your first episode. I apologize for rushing through it so often. But he does this whole bit where he tries to convince everybody they've broken most of the commandments, where he's like where he does the whole like uh well have you ever looked at a woman with lust in your heart? Well, Jesus says that counts as adultery thing. Except for the kid that he's talking to is like, no, 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 I've just fucked women. I didn't it wasn't just with lust. I mean, not, you don't have to go metaphorical here, man. I actually committed that sin, or at least I would like you to believe that I did. <laughs> yeah, she's, a girl. Uh, she's from Canada, but I'm totally damned. Totally damned. <laughs> <laughs> All the way damned. Don't even think about it. Uh, I love the part with a uh, big orange hair lady during this segment too, where he's she's like, "Yeah, I'm a sinner, but uh, I can just ask forgiveness last minute." And he's like, "Fuck, can uh, you? God damn it! Fuck, wait, can she do that? <laughs> is this my thing is stupid. Damn it. No, no, no. Listen, you can't do that because you couldn't just go to the judge and say, oh, judge, I'm super sorry. Please forgive me. You've got to. Oh, no, that, that is it. Uh, right? It is. Uh, <laughs> that, why would I give that example? Because I'm about to give that example. <laughs> yeah, no, and he does. He does. Like right after she says, no, there's a stupid loophole in your religion that makes it easy. And he's like, well, let me tell you all about that stupid loophole. Hey, fuck. Called indulgences. Wait. <laughs> we need to re damn it. I should write these ahead. This is not going well. And also, like, okay, again, I should point out that there's a brunette girl he's talking to that looks 14, which makes this so fucking twisted, especially when he starts going, like, can I pray with you? Will you kneel with me? I thought she looked a good 17.5 <laughs> in New York. Let's, let's go with she that. She was in let's New York and that. she was 17.5. <laughs> also, this is where he's like, try, she's like, oh, she's doing the like polite. Yeah, no, I'll think about it. Think about it. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we should totally get coffee sometime. And he's like, <laughs> can we get coffee right now? What if we got coffee right now? <laughs> right here. I mean, why wait, right? It's crazy. I'm just so spontaneous <laughs> and crazy. <laughs> well, I love, yeah, because, like, look, at this point, everyone's sick of fucking talking to Ray. So he goes through this this little round of, of man on the street videos where everybody, like, sure does wish they were Christian, but um, they got a thing right now. So it's, I mean, it's like virtually <laughs> every one of them. I love to this. He goes, he goes to the chick. He goes like, uh, what, why would I be this earnest unless I can? And she's like, are you selling the movie you're making? Your eyebrows look weird. <laughs> they look like spam. <laughs> weird spam, spam eyebrows. Now, Noah, <laughs> just now, you had to caveat a little bit when you said almost everybody because um <laughs> one man, a man who is... <laughs> The essence of Heath and Wright mixed with 
an amazing <laughs> multi-thousand-year culture that we all respect <laughs> and admire. Mixed quite with a bit. the porn that I watch. Yes, <laughs> mixed with the porn that I watch. And my sister, not the porn with my sister. My sister's not. My sister's thirteen. Uh, that's not. Yeah, you won't relevant. be able to watch know. porn of her for 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 quite a while. That's so. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was about to get I, awkward if I didn't say that, exactly. wasn't it? Yeah, the I pulled that is, right the point out. Is, <laughs> Your mom listens to this show is the point. That's not, the point. She's working out. She, she doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really enjoy this part of the show. As much. She likes the citation needed. She doesn't love this. this I'm going to get I'm going to get a swearing text from her again about the swearing. All right. The, but then a hero, the hero Gotham needs arises. Would someone please describe what our Asian skateboarder does in his final scene in this film? <laughs> he just skateboards away. Doesn't break and do that. Like, you're not my real dad. Hits him in the face with a guitar. <laughs> Squint in the nail and skateboards away. Yeah, it's like, the like they show him like going like, no, nah, man, look, because he's clearly pointing at the walk, don't walk thing. Like, I've missed three of those, dude. I have shit to do that's more important than this. And we, but we watch him for a really long time, right? So we're supposed to be like, damn it, that one got away, right? Like, that's clearly how they're selling this scene to us. But he is so clearly just like, oh, man, I hope I can bring a trash can in because it's any container slushy day at 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, so we have to we have to go back to the crazy purple haired lady that Heath opened up with in, in, in the best worst yeah. uh, here and referred to as straw woman. Um, to p point out that she doesn't fucking care anything at all about her life because there's no God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So good. I wanted her to mime skateboard away <laughs> <laughs> on the grass lawn that they're standing on. <laughs> crunch, crunch. <laughs> Come back past the other way in a mime canoe. <laughs> Still hate you. Takes a mime elevator matter. down. Oh, this woman, <laughs> I miss her. She is she every person who sends us a seven page email to let us know why she's canceling her 50 cent Patreon pledge <laughs> personified. I think it's very sweet when they do And when do Noah that. says the green party. <laughs> oh, I've never, I've never gotten those ones. It's usually for me. It's like, yeah, no, I, I had hard times or something. Um, but yeah, so, and now it's time to cut back to Ray's sermon. <laughs> where he goes, what's the difference between Christians and non-Christians? And I got my hand raised like, ooh, 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 I know this one. Because we hate rah, rah, too. <laughs> <laughs> basically doing the Chris Rock bit. Well, this is where he gives us the parachute analogy for the second time in one minute. Literally, <laughs> I went back. This, this fucking analogy shows up two times within the same minute in this film. Yeah, okay. He's saying trust Jesus like a parachute, which is... A parachute might be literally the worst thing to have faith in. I feel like <laughs> confidence in parachutes should be data-driven more than like any other thing that you're going to have confidence in. Well, okay, this is a classic example of Ray not being smart enough to make his own point. Because what he's trying to say, this is how this apologetic goes. I've heard this apologetic from much better apologists before. Is It's an apologetic to the whole, well, if you think you're going to heaven, why are you still scared, right? Well, we're both jumping out of the airplane. I have a parachute. You don't. I'm still scared because I'm afraid of heights. But I'm not going to die, even though I know I have my parachute. But he's so bad at this that he never makes that point at all. <laughs> and the way that actually works is like, he's saying like, if you're about to jump out of a plane and I'm like, here's this invisible parachute, a Jewish guy from 2000 years ago says he definitely <laughs> packed it. <laughs> Are you going to think about that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I'm yes. going to check. I'm, I'm thinking check. and no. Yeah. I'm absolutely going to check. Also, if there's four different guys who are like, hey, man, uh, just so you know, that guy's fucking wrong. There's not a parachute in there. It's filled with pots and pans. And <laughs> of the world thinks that yours is filled with pots and pans and mine's a fucking parachute. Everybody <laughs> fucking jump. <laughs> I feel like the uh, religious people should jump out of airplanes message, though, is probably the best message we get out of this movie. It's true. Also, <laughs> tiny note. Uh. We get a shot of Ray here, like on stage, full out. A uh, little scruffy, Ray. Clean up that beard, right? all right? Here in front of a super church, get a get a trimmer and yeah. and look a little nice, all right? Yeah, nobody's gonna want to lick you looking like that, bro. <laughs> and, and then he talks about 
Pilgrim's Progress or Pilgrim's Promise, whatever the hell it is, for a, a, a very brief second for no reason whatsoever except possibly to shoehorn in the video game cutscene computer animations from 1999 that accompany this portion of the movie. Oh, well, I but I love the Pilgrim's Progress or whatever this parable is because it's one of the first ones they tell you as a kid where you're like, that's a bad story. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it's, it's just drunk dad just, you know, listen to me, kids, all right? There's a pilgrim, he goes, and then the, there's a giant named Depression and the despair, <laughs> and he gets locked in Castle Sad. But then he reaches <laughs> in his pocket and he goes, I have the key. And his friend Alan goes, you had the fucking key the whole time? What about when the giant was beating the shit out of us, man? You're a fucking asshole. You got to tell me, what else do you have on you? Let's do an inventory now. <laughs> and the pilgrim was like, I don't like your tone. And then they didn't talk for like a day and a half. <laughs> and they drifted apart because after college, you're not friends with those people anymore. The end. <laughs> Yep, that was some computer animation. <laughs> oh, shit. And since Ray's babbling, I guess, doesn't lend itself to act breaks or anything, we might as well take our hiatus here. But first, let me give the C segment the hard sell. Has Eli ever looked at Heath with lust in his heart? Okay, stupid yes. Will Ray resort to showing us actual videos of suicide for nothing but shock value? Why are we watching a murder weapon on YouTube? That's a good question. Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the negligently homicidal conclusion of Exit, The Appeal of Suicide. Not a great title. It gets more appealing as the movie I'm goes, say that's, I'm just right? going to say that. Every minute not makes a great movie on Minute 30, yeah. I was like, ooh, a gun with a single bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you suffer from depression? It's like a dark cloud. Enveloping me wherever I go. Do you struggle to find joy in the things that used to make you happy? Sometimes I look over at Phyllis's corpse and realize I haven't touched her in weeks. Do you suffer from suicidal thoughts? Sometimes the only reason I don't kill myself is that it's going to be way funnier if I wait until my birthday. Well, then why not try Jesus? Jesus doesn't work like other medications. It doesn't alter your brain chemistry or inhibit selective serotonin reuptake, but it has been clinically tested to improve your mood because clinically tested can legally proceed just about any claim. Once I started taking Jesus, I stopped thinking about suicide because I was terrified that a demon would torture me if I did. So if you're suffering from a potentially fatal mental illness, ignore your doctors and try Jesus instead. Thanks to Jesus, I don't even go to my therapist anymore. My pastor says I don't need him. And the enormous social pressure on me to cure myself of mental illness by wishing super hard leaves me far too ashamed to ask for the help I so desperately need. Jesus, because the courts are afraid to charge us with negligence. Side effects of Jesus may include vomiting, dizziness, confusion, difficulty speaking, hallucinations, misogyny, triple vision, nausea, anti-Semitism, anxiety, unusual nervousness or irritability, new or worsening depression, mental constipation, a false sense of well-being, erectile dysfunction, stigmata, circular reasoning, racism, homophobia, restlessness, genocide, trouble sleeping, paranoia, difficulty swallowing, sexual oppression, loss of comprehension, appeals to antiquity, kids that probably should have been aborted, sore knees, numbness of the cerebrum, agitation, lethargy, overactive reflexes, convulsion, speaking in tongues, propositional fallacies, trouble concentrating, itching, skin, rash, joint pain, and a historically unqualified president. Ask your pastor about Jesus today. And we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to jump right back into some man on the streeting one more time. And this time we're going to start off on 14-year-old Katie Holmes again with the camera very clearly panning up from her tits at like the last, oh shit, like kind of a, a moment. <laughs> She's going to talk yeah, and, again. And we have Ray uh, walking us through an example of how wrong he is. <laughs> so, so this is the example, right? He goes, well, what if you were in terrible debt, right? And I call you and I say, hey. Katie, don't worry. I'm going to come and I'm going to pay off your debt. Wouldn't you feel better? You'd feel better? And she's like, I mean, yeah, obviously I would I would feel amazing. And yeah, that would be wonderful. Now, what if I said I'd pay your bills after you die, but in the meantime, you have to do everything I say? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, like, if you pretend you'll be a millionaire Tuesday and you give me a hamburger today, <laughs> right. then... That's it. That's religion. <laughs> Tithe me that burger. And also, can we point out that we're like talking to a 16-year-old girl about an example that involves foreclosure? 
Right? Like, he's like, imagine you're under a foreclosure notice. And she's just going like, I don't even know. I'm the one who said I'm not a Christian. I'm a Catholic <laughs> earlier. I don't think we can trust me to know what words mean. <laughs> but the point he's making is not if you owed a million dollars and your house was about to be taken and I gave you a million dollars, you'd feel better. It's if you thought I was going to give you a million dollars, you'd feel better. Right? You'd still lose your fucking house. But between now and then, you'd feel a lot better. Right. And I should point out, Ray has a ton of money for his ministry. So, like, Ray, you could actually do this, buddy. <laughs> you could actually just go and find people in foreclosure. And that would be way better than making videos that are going to kill people. I'm just wondering, if you want to know what to do with your budget for the next one, <laughs> spare us, you know, markers, the silent killer, and just give <laughs> some money to people unconditionally. I'll take some. I need some. Just give me some. I'll take some. Yeah. Is it bad to sniff those? <laughs> they smell we'll really find good. Out. Yeah. yeah, no, his whole message here is it's important to remember that the Bible says believing in the Bible will give you joy and peace. Therefore, and then we go back to the sermon. Uh, th this is the part of the sermon, too, where he talks about the guy who survived after jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge to kill himself. Okay, yeah. What was happening? The only guy to survive a jump from the Golden Gate Bridge was apparently an atheist. Yep. So what lesson... What lesson are you guys getting from that? We have superpowers, right? <laughs> I don't think, uh, I mean, you know, honestly, if we convinced our listeners that we did and that we could survive this bridge thing, we would be like tied with Ray, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was about yeah. to say, I, there's a lot of people who have been making jokes about drugging me with tampered brownies. So why don't we don't <laughs> tell people they can push us off heights? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe we don't tempt fate. We got some folks real excited for the live shows coming up in Austin. <laughs> some guy, I love your show, Flip. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to Harry Houdini. Um, and and so we and we check in with this guy, right? The atheist that survived the fall from Golden Gate Bridge. He's like, yeah, I'm super happy about the not dying thing. I don't feel like you needed needed me to tell you that but uh you know i did so now we're done and we're done to be uh, fair we, they do not survey the people who were happy to be dead i'm just yes. saying it's not us <laughs> do some fucking science yeah true that confirmation true that. bias in there yeah, somewhere. survivor <laughs> bias or whatever it's called um and then we get some violent suicide rescues <laughs> okay so here's weird. the problem he mixes in one just suicide which was a very couple. upsetting a couple i I love violent suicide rescues. I watch them on YouTube for fun because they're amazing. Though you seen the one where the guy like he does the thing where he like zoops down and just kicks the lady in through the window. That's, yeah, that's that's a great one. Oh, that's a good one. But then in the middle, it's like punch save, and you're like, hey, right? yeah, they, they get saved. But then in the middle, there's one who's just like, eh, blam. Yeah. yeah. Oh, didn't get that guy. Didn't get that one how did the punch save lady not see the guy coming right he's he's just like slowly like crawling over from like another window top of a building and he just like slowly goes up to her and just punches her back onto her onto her porch or whatever did you think he was gonna like tandem jump with her what did you think was about to happen <laughs> Fucking weird. Who the fuck knows? But yeah, so he shows a few of those and then he mixes in a couple of shots of people like about to jump off of a bridge and he shows us some rescues as though he's trying to like make us think, oh no, this guy, will, this guy, will, no, he jumped. He's going to nope. die. And, yep. and one of the guys is just like 10 feet off the ground. <laughs> yeah. He's like his ankles would have stung a little bit. If you <laughs> like that was it. Ah, shouldn't have taken that flight of stairs. Ooh. <laughs> And then we get a uh, suicide bridge guy who is actually cool. The guy that just runs around on that suicide bridge with his moped tackling people. <laughs> uh, such fun fact about that guy. I, I do eventually want to do a citation needed episode. That guy, as he has gotten older, has apparently gotten bad at telling who is committing suicide and who is crossing a bridge. So sometimes, he, well, he, he just grabs people and is like, don't kill yourself. And they're like, I'm going to work. And he's like, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's a really weird story. This Chinese guy on a bridge, he'd sneak up on people that he thought were going to kill themselves. He'd grab them and hold them, and then he'd take them to an apartment. Yep. He yes. did this 321 times over 13 years. So he'd abduct people and take them to a kidnapping apartment. Yep. And, and like you know, I said, at least a few of them were like, 
Dude, I was just gonna like take a picture over the edge. There's <laughs> ducks. Now, there's ducks. Get off me. There's fucking ducks. <laughs> Ow. Ow. And do you Ray's think here's hero. The thing. that guy has kidnapped 321 people, right? Do you think at a certain point he's just like, hey, Mrs. Chow, how you doing? Seriously, you need to stop struggling. How you doing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he's getting so big. Yeah, no, he was he was lingering, so I just seriously, seriously, you're being very rude to Miss Chow. He was lingering, so I just figured <laughs> take him up into the apartment. Also, All right. <laughs> what the fuck does this story have to do with it? Because like I'm almost certain this guy isn't Christian. The Chinese guy. Maybe he's Jesus. <laughs> like, unless he's Jesus, what the fuck is the point of him telling us this story? Jesus is Asian. This is a weird message from Ray Comfort. <laughs> Wouldn't have guessed it. It's progressive, actually. I mean, based on your racist ranking of the races when we were between the B and C segment, that is Asian was one, everybody. Was. Just they so have you know. An attractiveness bias. I don't want to get into it. They no one need to have <laughs> You agreed that Asians were it wasn't just attractiveness. We said it was the cult, there was the food, there was We're gonna yeah. do a patron only. They have Hang out where we'll figure this out. And all now live on we air. meet. They and had the best religions. Meet. Buddhism's and, awesome. And now the beep sends. <laughs> and we meet Emil Zwayne. His bros call him EZ. Oh, okay. This <laughs> is now it's time for the everyone gather in the high school gym and fear from the ex gang member. <laughs> yes. <laughs> section of the program. Now, this guy is apparently Ray's producer, right? This He's the producer of all our movies and our award-winning TV shows that we gave awards to. Yeah, be proud, <laughs> Emil. This is your legacy. All right, and we learned that he, uh, his uncle killed himself when he was four, uh, which apparently was bad. That's uh, how he knew there was a loving God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and he was a gang member. And the moment he says this, we get the silliest looking gang member picture. <laughs> he's sitting on a floral couch yes, with a so hat good. perched on his head like to the side. He might as well be like putting his leg over a chair the wrong way and like giving some <laughs> teens the straight talk. <laughs> yeah, your, your gangster photo really loses a lot of steam when it includes your grandma's plastic covered couch and <laughs> floral wallpaper. And yeah, he's wearing like 19 hats, all balanced, <laughs> weird with like gaps. It's like the initiation to his gang was hat Jenga. And he like <laughs> somehow got it. It's really strange looking picture. I love to guys. As he's saying this, he's like, I was a gang member, a crip. Not not fucking blood. Anyway, um, and then he goes, he goes, hey, you guys ever see that It's a Wonderful Life movie? Funny thing, that copyright wasn't renewed on time, so it's free for us to show you clips of it. And incidentally, that's the only reason anyone really knows about it is because TV stations were allowed to air it for free. And what's what's the lesson from It's a Wonderful Life? Like, if you're thinking about killing yourself, have... A, a, an angel <laughs> show you the counterfactual universe first? How, how do you use this advice? Also, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, not a great example of a movie to use about depression because Jimmy Stewart had terrible PTSD that kept him grounded during the war, and this movie triggered his PTSD, and he had to go to a sanitarium afterwards. Wait, so it's actually really it's not... yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a. Jesus. You can Google it. He had to go to a sanitarium. He had terrible PTSD after the war. He was, he maybe hit his wife. It depends on who you ask. Yeah, but yeah. No, I think he's pretty sure he kept hit his him wife. grounded. He, so, but no, but apparently, <laughs> apparently, I only know about the bad things about you know Charlize weird Theron stuff. Killed her dad. Yeah, no, you know, you've, you've mentioned it. I think her mom um, killed her dad. So no, she killed her. Pretty dad. Pretty sure Shakespeare was not the real writer of those things. <laughs> I will, I will concede that Marla was shaking before I will admit that the atomic blonde didn't kill her dad. <laughs> so, no, but so the message we're supposed to take away from this. Now, again, this starts off as the direct to address. Hey, if you're thinking about suicide, I have an important message for you. Did you ever see It's a Wonderful Life? Like, that's really how this is presented. <laughs> yep. And the message is, see, in that movie, George Bailey prayed. Why don't you try that? It worked for a fictional character. Have you tried it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he also he gives us this line at the end about, you know, he's like, I almost killed myself once in front of my family and I didn't. And now I'm super important and I do raise movies. Good thing I didn't die, huh? <laughs> <laughs> also, we get a shot of his family photo 
And I cannot tell who his wife is in that photo. Can you? <laughs> it's just a series Definitely. of short women. Definitely not clear. <laughs> By the way, the way Noah just read that thing from EZ was like uh, flawless in comparison. I hate how this fucking oh, guy talks. Oh, yeah. He talks like that kid who can't read that gets made uh, to read. And like, oh, yes. He's pausing between syllables before the word's <laughs> over because he forgot to breathe. And, just, oh. and that's why the photo <gasps> graphy was in Oh my God, it's photography. Fuck. <laughs> Cut. And maybe you take the short bus over to Bosey's. I don't know. Something. <laughs> Do you talk? Do you talk on a normal basis? How often do you talk the English language? <laughs> do you, how often do you say the word photography? Do you say that a lot? <laughs> you want to give Jesus. a press conference about some white supremacists? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could be president. Now, and this is also where the movie becomes like, if it wasn't already, this is where it becomes truly insidious, right? Because the guy says, you know, if you're thinking about you're killing yourself, I want to urge you most importantly... To cry out to God and pray. Those are his actual words. I want to urge you most importantly to cry out to God and pray. That's step one. Yeah. Evil Universe <laughs> Andrew wrote the sentence very carefully. He's like, seek help. Pray to God. See, there could have been a comma there. So seeking help is not negligent because they could, seeking help could involve medical advice. So you can't sue us. Don't sue us. Yeah, right. But most importantly, <laughs> I, well, that's uh, most is just a matter of opinion. It's really <laughs> yeah. And OK, so now it's time to be treated to nine minutes of like a like a suicide fake out video on YouTube. Double lick bring. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh huh. <laughs> so this is it's a tween revealing her thoughts to us about suicide via three by five index cards. Ugh. Yeah. Series are really sad. It's like the suicide ending for love action. <laughs> right. Kira Knightley just twists her own neck and dies. Yeah. <laughs> Guy's like, ah, oh, fuck. I was about to yeah. show you the cards uh, about how uh, God say, I got to rework the order of these cards. This is not. Uh, fuck. I'm going to go to fight some zombies. <laughs> so, and so here's the thing too about this video is that like at first, because of the way that this movie has played out so far, we don't know if this little girl's going to kill herself at the end of this, you know, it's like this like 14 year old girl. And if she's going to kill herself at the end of it, I can't write jokes about it. Right. Right. That's and like problem, even me is all of our notes are identical. Cause all of us are like, Oh, that's very sad. I hope that she ends up. And then she starts talking about Jesus and we're like, Oh, fuck you. Lip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Fucking count. <laughs> Count Chocula, I fucked a black a hot topic ad, you piece of shit. God. But all of our notes start out as like, I hope her healing journey begins with one step. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I want to point out that like he's tricked us here. Um, but this is like a several minute long bit. This is a little girl holding up cards about her pr depression. So we are literally reading someone's middle school girlfriend's poetry now. Uh, this has been my go-to most boring possible activity for years. <laughs> and that's also, what we're really doing in his movie. She uh, she says a couple of things that I have questions about. A couple of things. Just want to throw out this. Uh, she says, you're just like me. Uh, no, I have an intact lower lip. So not just like you. <laughs> uh, and she says, I have secrets. I want to know her secrets. Double lip ring girl? Come on. Those are going to be some good secrets. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come on. And then yeah. there's a Bible <laughs> quote about how you don't have to die if you believe Ray. Right. And now that we've spent, whatever, 34 minutes making me want to kill myself, Ray has some thoughts on what I should do next. Simple numbered list. Number one. Science is wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reject science. You are not here by chance. You did not, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and he says, God formed you in his own image. And then we see a fetus with an umbilical. So God is a fetus? <laughs> are we, what's the message here? Oh, that'd be a weird heaven greeting, right? You just show up. My child, I want you. Oh, God, you're all red and pulsy. <laughs> I don't know. I was very clear I'm that I made timeless. you in my image. So yeah. why would I get old like uh, God? It'd be a really re weird rapture, too. It's just a fetus bungeeing down on a cord, <laughs> pulling people <laughs> up. Zoink. Like swing shot from American Gladiator. I feel like that's the least weird version of the rapture that we've encountered so far. 
He also That's- specifically says that you are handcrafted by the creator. So in case you were wondering, yeah, God's arms were all up in your mom's shit, like elbow deep. Oof. Also, he did a shitty job with me. Like, can we be real? Right? <laughs> Look at my fucking face. What are you? What are you just had an end, was I an end of the day? It's about to be lunch, and you were like, oh, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll give him the face of a child, but I'll take all the hair away, starting at twenty-two. There you go. That's good. He'll get laid by being funny. <laughs> So okay. that's number one. Eli will get be laid by being funny. Exactly. <laughs> Item number two. Death isn't real. Yep. But you got to talk to Jesus. Or only death if you... is still not real, but it's but <laughs> way worse than not than real death would be. Yeah. Repent to Jesus. Except, so after you're done rejecting science, you accept Jesus. You're two thirds of the way there. Let. Jesus take the wheel and you definitely won't drive off a bridge. That's exactly. not what will happen. Jesus wouldn't do that to you. God damn it. This is disgusting. And then we get number three. Help is available. It's actually a good one. Yeah. Well, for a second. Here for a and second. There, yeah. For a second. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Because he's like, reach out for support. And I'm like, hey, you know, somewhere in all this monkey type, there was good advice. But then he specifically says, talk to a respected Christian doctor. <laughs> Find a family member, a friend, school counselor, or a Christian doctor. <laughs> None of that Jew medicine. Yeah. We know how stereotypically bad Jewish people are at doctoring. You wouldn't want one of those. Fuck yeah, you. not one of them atheists that's going to give you all a bunch of brain pills. Make you all <laughs> swole up. Ray walks into a therapist's office, sees a mezuzah, walks right back out again. No. <laughs> No. <laughs> he also recommends a prevention hotline, which I Googled. It seems real. It doesn't seem Christian. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. 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 He does say, you know, you could, or you could call a hotline. But then he says, um, or you could talk to a pastor. If you don't have one, check our website and we'll help you find a church. A fucking church. A church. Uh. Yeah. And he, again, he says, talk to a Christian pastor. First of all, they're the only ones with pastors. Right. There aren't Muslim pastors. Talk to a pastor would be enough. But he wants to make sure that you don't accidentally wander into one of those who do Muslim brown people churches. Uh, so he, we, he we rank those specific. pretty low. We rank those pretty low. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, and then he closes it off by saying, also, please don't kill yourself, Ray. Yeah. Like a fucking YouTuber telling people not to harass the <laughs> girl he just made a takedown video of. Just like, oh, and by the way, I'm totally against killing yourself. Ugh. <laughs> That's the whole movie. If you cut out the like murdery parts, it's just hotline number. Please don't. That's yeah. it. <laughs> and now we mercifully get the credits, but Emil has to show back up and uh, sell us some shit while we do. Oh. Well, here's how he sells it. He sells it by going, you're probably wondering what you can do to prevent suicide. And the answer, by the way, is to share this fucking movie on Facebook. Or give them money. For just 99 easy payments of forty nine ninety five. <laughs> you too can steer the mentally ill away from medicine. <laughs> you can buy our Bible study and we'll show you how to cure depression at your youth group. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or you could buy this book we made about not killing yourself. That'll do the trick. You've tried <laughs> shooting it off. You've tried <laughs> axing it off. There must be a better way. You hung yourself and missed. Cliff jumping. <laughs> Literally, the fact that any human being can follow what can I do to prevent suicide with follow Ray on Twitter and yes. Facebook <laughs> and sign up for our email list. Go fuck yourself. I mean, look, I, like, I mean, at the end of the show, we say, hey, you know, you should follow us on Twitter and 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 and, and give us money and shit. But we're not like a suicide prevention show like that is in such incredibly bad taste and they don't even seem to know. Maybe if we had a few more patron donors, I'd have a reason to hang around oh, a little Jesus longer. Christ. No, it's fine. It's a free show. I get it. Why would you pay for podcasts? Why should I have nice things that make me want to keep going? Oh, God damn, dude. <laughs> so then at the very end. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. You think the Here worst part of this movie is over because yes. the movie is yes. over. 
but you are wrong. You are just about to turn off YouTube and shit. You've already closed the notes and everything. You think, I'm ready for this week's episode of God Awful Movies. And then the last second of this movie is like, I got nine more paragraphs to write here in my notes right quick. (sighs) This is the exact quote, and it is the last fucking frame of this movie. Ready? Quote, Depression is a very complex issue, and while it may have a genuine biological basis, uh, what as opposed what to a metaphysical, would, yeah, what <laughs> basis would you have? What are you talking about? Ghosts, thetans, lots of things. <laughs> while it may have a genuine biological basis, many experts believe question mark the vast <laughs> majority of cases diagnosed as organic depression, a term I've never heard, really aren't. <laughs> End quote. This isn't medical advice. Don't sue us when you stop taking your med. <laughs> bye yeah. I'm sorry. Organic depression. So he's saying lots of depression is is actually inorganic. What the <laughs> fuck don't, does that mean? That no, I don't fucking know. And also, okay. So yeah, we get d- disclaimer one. Depression is complicated, but you'll probably be fine if you don't stop taking your medicine. Disclaimer two. What we just said is legal now because we just told you it wasn't medical advice. And then we get this weird little one at the very, very end, which is like, we could have said other shit. Too. We, we, we were just scratching the fucking surface, guys. There's other suicide stuff as well. It's like Joseph Smith. There's much more that Layman said to the Glamanites, but I, <laughs> I cut it off. <laughs> it's here. stuffy in this hat, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. All right. So I'm tempted to put this movie at the very top of the list in terms of homicidal movies we've watched. The only one that can really compete is Vaxxed, but I feel like it came too late in the anti vax, you know, craziness or whatever to really count as a chief cause. So congrats, Ray. You're the best at something. You're the best, Ray. <laughs> and only because we have consequences for anti-vaxxers, right? He's yeah, not a doctor right. anymore, and he's only allowed to say what he thinks on a boat in international waters. <laughs> right. There's way, I'll tell you what I think about thallium in 10 minutes. We're almost <laughs> over the <laughs> You guys are so impatient. And uh, lizards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a strong nominee for this week's Best Worst could easily have been Best Worst You Might Also Enjoy lineup on the right side of YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) All right, here's what I got in order. Fired for Giving Brad Pitt a Bible Tract was the name of one video. Then Overcoming Pornography. You want to undercome it. (laughs) Eloquent Atheist Becomes Christian. Is rape an acceptable reason to have an abortion? Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Let's talk about this one. Is it? Pregnancy is an acceptable reason to have an abortion. Jesus fucking Christ. It's very pro-abortion. Recreational yeah. abortion. <laughs> you don't even have to be pregnant. You can just go in like, yeah, you know, just kill just something in my body. Kill just, something. Yeah, just dry it out. <laughs> <laughs> just pour it into a Chinese buffet. <laughs> and then the final one in the list was simply something called don't watch this movie and i didn't first time i ever took advice from ray comfort right there you go so my question to close off for the night is this what videos would i have found on that list if i had scrolled uh ooh, ooh, uh gaze which one's the boy <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I actually kept scrolling, and here's what I actually oh, found. Oh, These awesome. are real. Uh, there was one called, Is the Eclipse a Sign of the End of the World? <laughs> also by Living Waters. And Ray it's like a two-second video. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> just comes on. Nope. Uh, also, Ray Comfort's story, 10 out of 10 people die. Whatever what? the fuck that means. Uh, something called... Those are weird dentists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, something called "Delivered from Homosexuality," uh, and finally, a Tucker Carlson video called "Which Statues Are Next?" Washington, Jefferson. <laughs> so that was fun. Mm, so Eli, gays, which one's the boy? You were right. It was, I was in so there. Close. I was so <laughs> yeah. close. Uh, Damn, I feel like I should give you the points anyway. <laughs> 
Oh, Ray, you're a murderer. Not really, but sort of. And while that does it for our review of Exit, The Appeal of Suicide, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tighten your titties for next week's show. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Ah, uh, this I have been saving for a while. <laughs> this is Agent Emmis, a Jewish children's series about a secret agent uh, it's on yidflix.net. Yidflix.net. <laughs> yep. With an X. Is where you'll find Yidflix. it. Yidflix.net. <laughs> Agent Emmis. And this first episode we're doing is called The Fish Head. Just watch the preview. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know you don't watch the movies. Watch the preview. Tell me you don't want to see that fucking movie. Tell me you don't want to fucking see that movie. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're going to watch Agent Emmis and The Fish Head. We're going to describe it next week. Yeah, and, and and if you don't watch the preview, I should say this movie was made for nine bucks, right? By Jews, by Jews, <laughs> yes, Jews, yes. Jews, Jews. Jews. <laughs> the preview involves someone blowing a shofar and everyone realizing how terrible a shofar sounds. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so oh God, excited. I have my headphones on. My ears are still ringing from that now. So, yeah. Stick with stealing black people's music. <laughs> the note for the Jewish people. That was the formula that worked for you guys musically. Stick with it. We crushed it. And we still do. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Hear that? Go ahead. Check out some of those executive producer titles. <laughs> <laughs> All those names get real Rosenberg-y. <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 105 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, and Citation Needed, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars, and all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. I bought Eli a Christian parachute for his birthday. Am I doing it right? <laughs> Eli's birthday eventually just came and went without incident. I was doing it right. <laughs> but only if we hit our goal on Patreon of 8,000. <laughs> and you follow me on Twitter. I want more <laughs> Twitter fights. It's my birthday. You, you can change it. a dollar an episode i feel like we've gotten i know the begging thing really worked this month but i feel like it's gotten far i feel like i just threatened to kill myself if people yeah, i feel like pleasure. you did i feel Our like that's reach exactly goal is he lied <laughs> not yet committing suicide yes let's run that one by andrew i mean i'm in i am a hundred percent in I'm i don't not think your it high needs to make girlfriend. it that far <laughs> Fucking, fucking Christ. Yeah, put up or shut up. <laughs> oh, I love your show. Do you? Do you? <laughs> show me. Prove you love me. Oh, Morgan, we're going to need a longer outro <laughs> theme. We need it to be longer. Eli needs more attention. <laughs> That's what I always say. What a fucked up title. How awesome is suicide? Am I right, kids? I mean. <laughs> no, you don't. That is not at all what you <laughs> Debate you on SIO. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Will Eli kill himself? The proposition today on Intelligence Square. <laughs> Sam, Sam's just doing that podium rub. Um, I feel like this is inappropriate. Uh, um, uh, 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 <laughs> First strike. All right, here we go. Hi, hi there. I'm Carl the Pegasus. Yeah, cut, cut. <laughs> what? <laughs>
<laughs> you started with a British eye. <laughs> You're gonna confuse the shit out of people. Aren't you glad we were able to find a job for Eli? Imagine what he would be doing if we couldn't find him. He's at an interview at doing that. Yeah. What are you guys? Can this? Is this helpful? No, garlic bread is part of the thing do? now. What do you sell? Garlic bread? I feel like I could have sold garlic bread in the middle of that. You remember when I said garlic bread? Thumbs. Thumbs. Uh, <laughs> and then Light just a thumbs? quick, uh, quick, two quick notes on this one. And Morgan, actually, yes, please keep everything through uh, a gun with a single bullet on that for the uh, for the B segment. Appreciate it. <clears throat> I have to say that because like like a normal human would say, well, obviously they don't want to put that out into the world. But but we do. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.